Welcome back. Today in the Cheapo Spotlight, we have got the all-new Bellman DVM810 for your minuscule multimeter pleasure. Let's take a look. Bellman, a name probably a little more popular in Europe than in North America, but that name has been around for a while. Uh, let's take a look at this little tiny cheap, cheap meter. I paid around 10 bucks for this Canadian, and you know what? The funny thing is, when I first got this, I thought it was bigger than this. This thing is minuscule. Before I dwell on that size, let's take a look at what you actually get in the box. Or in this case, rather, it's like a little plastic enclosure. Um, not too much, really. You get these crappy leads, and I'll, I'll go into that in a minute. And that is it. You do get your little tiny development instruction manual, but really not a lot of features or subsets to this meter. Um, it's in multiple different languages. Yeah, that's it. That is all. The leads are really pointy, but that's about it. I mean, look at how thin that wire is. It is super thin. How thin is it exactly? Well, let's just take a peek, shall we? 1.8 millimeters. Wow, that is super thin. Standard is normally about 3.2, 3.3, 3.4. You get the idea. This is literally half the thickness of a standard test lead. So, ah, you know, you're gonna start pumping some current through there. This is gonna be really toasty. Yeah. Other thing is the end shroud. Look at that. It is one really messed up little shroud. And oh gosh, you know, when it comes time to actually stick it in the meter, you really gotta like, you know, get it in there. And even then it seems just to be hanging for dear life. So I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, maybe they weren't. Ah. Really fits handy dandy, as you can see right in the palm of your hand and then some. And unfortunately, we don't have a tilt stand. No, can't do it. Well, it can do that, actually. Damn, hook. But you know what? Tilt stand, it's much better. So here are some pretty small multimeters. We've got that Maztec XL 830L. We've got the Zoe ZT-102A and the uh, Volcraft VC-11. All small in size from small to smallest, but you can see even compared to that VC-11, the VC-11 makes this thing look even smaller. And this is a small meter. So, wow, it is crazy, crazy tiny. Taking a look at that selector switch, starting at the midnight or off position. Volts AC up to 500 volts. Current DC from 200 microamps to 10 amps. Transistor mode diode resistance up to 2 mega ohm finally volts dc up to 500 volts at the bottom of the meter we standard input jack on the left for the common or ground in the middle we have our volt resistance and milliamp followed on the far right by the current high current so nothing fancy schmancy going on here no bells and whistles no live wire live detect no ncv nada you are getting the bare bones Let's take a look at this display. We'll turn it on and bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. There you have it. Right now we are defaulting to 500 volts AC and we do have that neat little annunciator telling us we are in the danger zone. In terms of the display itself, just standard liquid crystal uh, technology, nothing fancy going on here. It's very plain Jane in that respect. No backlight, unfortunately, once again, just no frills on this meter. Um, it looks okay you know uh, it's 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 it is what it is it's it's nothing new folks it's just your standard liquid crystal display lcd so uh you know uh, well, it's, it's 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 all right i mean yeah it's a little boring right but it's okay yeah Probably one of my big caveats with the smaller meters is that uh, the display I was hoping would be a little bit bigger. You know, it'd be nice for a display at least to have digits um, twice this size. Just because you have a small meter doesn't necessarily mean that you need to squint when you're looking at it, but eh, it's not the case. Here's another really small meter from Anning, and look at that, it is still bigger than this little DVMA 10. Wow, this thing is so tiny. One feature that is really sorely missing uh, is the fact that there is no continuity. Even the small Anning still does have continuity along with the diode, but no continuity on the DVM-A10. Oh, I love my continuity. I tell you, the first thing you want to do if you get this meter is throw out these leads. They're absolute garbage. 
I mean, like, like, what is this? Like, really? Really? Ah. <sighs> All right, time for a quick voltage showdown. And I thought, hey, why not take a nicely calibrated Keysight 1282A behemoth of a meter, super accurate, and let's put it up against one of these little cheapos. Hey, sounds like fun to me. Sitting at 3.3 volts DC, here we go. Up to four volts, 4.3, 4.3, 4.4. Go up to a, a nice 10.5, zero volts, 10 10.5, 10.5, 10.49, 9, <laughs> 10.5, look at that. Wow, spot on. Up, up, and away. Let's sit at 20.5 volts, 20.5 right away for the 810, 20.5 for the Anning. And that key sight, it is thinking, it is thinking. Is it gonna hit 20.5? 20.499 volts. So very, very close. All right, up, up and away. For, oh, it did hit 20.5, it just took a while. Well, you know what, let's max things out now. 32 volts, even Steven, 32.00. And counting for the key site, 32.1 for the 810 and 31.9 for the Anning. So, wow. Hey, all things considered, look at that. These little guys definitely can keep it up. In fact, they're even a little bit faster than that uber expensive key site. Way to go, cheapos. Quick DC accuracy test. We should be looking at 250 millivolts and one count off 249. 2.50 is what we want to see and bang on 2.50 volts. Hey, great stuff. Quick look at resistance sitting at 1.8 megs right now. And yeah, don't forget this has a tiny range. Only goes up to uh, two mega ohms. So mm, you know what? Definitely not going to be your resistance meter of choice. So 1.8 is what we want to see. And let's see, are we going to get 1.8? 1.79596 ish. Okay. One meg even. It's thinking, but okay, not so bad. It's not so bad. Let's bring it up to 900k. 600k. 300k. 100k. Yeah, so we can see, generally speaking, it doesn't take too long to settle. We've definitely seen a lot worse as of late. So, yeah, despite the small range, it does seem to be okay. Right now we're on milliamp mode, and we have hit a snag. Uh, wow, you know, all good things must come to an end. Well, that happened awfully quick with the little Velman. So it is not able to read milliamps at all. Um, we'll have to pop open that fuse, but uh, as it stands, it is a DOA. Um, yeah, let's just, for the heck of it, I've got this Zoe here, and let's just swap the leads, make sure indeed it's the meter and not anything else. Boy, these leads are absolutely atrocious. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so according to the uh, Zoe, uh, we're sitting around 70 milliamps. Um, nothing. This does have a 200 milliamp maximum reading but uh we can't can't even get that far so well, that's too bad <sighs> i'm gonna take this apart and just take a look at the fuse just to see if it's not a fuse issue two phillips in the back that's it that's all and it pops off and wow interesting all right so we have an interesting little piece of foam and all right, so there's the fuse. Let's see what we got here. Let's do a quick check on that fuse. See if we have some continuity going on here. Wow, the fuse is good. Hmm, so it ain't the fuse, folks. Dang, Alrighty. Well, after Daddy, we got an issue. Ah. 
these shroud tips are just driving me absolutely nuts. So I'm just going to take a razor knife here and just cut them down just so at least I can finish this review without blowing a gasket. Already that's done. Let's put it back into place. Now I want to check that high current as well. Well, maybe not enough. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is definitely the worst test lead I have seen in quite some time. Yeesh. All right. Sitting in high current mode right now at 6.2 amps. And yeah, no worries here. Um, with high current, at least, the meter is definitely measuring. But uh, for whatever reason, that milliamp mode is DOA. So my little multimeter friend, it has come to my attention that you are resisting current. That is not very nice. Ship up or ship out. Ah. Dial mode is next. Here we go. Let's see how good it does. Starting off with the green LED. And oh wow, it is lit. And we do have that forward voltage drop. Over to the yellow. Hey, I was not expecting that. 242. Over to the red. Yep, it is lit. And we have that forward drop. Over to the blue. It's lit. No indicator. And finally the white. And yeah, look at that. Look at that. It lit them all. So surprisingly, um, five out of five in terms of illumination and three to five in terms of the actual voltage drop indicator. So yeah, better than I was expecting. Very respectable 2.75 volts output voltage in diode mode. It is high voltage time. Why not put the safety goggles on? Three, two, one. Over 500 volts DC. And we have that enunciator giving us the high voltage indicator. One more time, 550 volts. No smell of smoke. Hey, it looks like it survived. Good stuff. Taking a look at the inside of this little beast, here we go. And first off, you'll notice, look at that. Yeah, besides the no shielding, well, that's no surprise. LR23A 12 volt battery. You don't see that every day. Um, yeah, definitely harder to source. So if your battery dies, um, you can have a little bit of fun trying to get one of these. Mind you, Amazon, what have you, they're, they're there. They're easily accessible, but uh, interesting choice nonetheless. Not a whole lot in the term uh, in terms of the input protection. No, not much at all. We've got that uh, rather decent looking current shunt for the high current side of things. We have those nice grooved edges creating more resistance. Um, but that's it. Uh, no PTCs, no mods, nothing at all in that respect. Um, I don't even see much clamping, if any clamping going on. Um, pretty sad. Uh, on the milliamp side, we have one fuse. And you know what? It looks like it's actually soldered to the PCB. Oh my God, it actually is. For whatever reason, they've decided to solder the fuse to the board. Oh my God, why would they do that? Eek. So you got to replace that fuse. Yeah, you're going to have to pull out your soldering gun at the same time. What are they thinking? Radio on that fuse is 250 milliamp, 250 volt. Ah, okay, moving up the line, we've got a trim pot, so you can actually adjust your variable voltage if you want to do a little bit of calibration. Um, yeah, that's it. There's our main IC over here. It is cobbed. Um, wow, not much else going on. I'm not a big fan of the way they've got those uh, battery uh, leads just soldered onto the main part of the PCB. It's rather messy and uh, flimsy, so uh, yeah. Taking a look at the reverse side of the PCB, yeah, not much else going on. Um, there's our input jacks themselves. And yeah, I'll have to say they're in there nice and firm, good solder blob, so they're definitely not going anywhere. Now that rotary track has a weird, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it has a weird sort of a two-tone look. Um, yeah, you don't see that all the time. I'm not sure what that's about. Is that corrosion? Like, what is that? That's, mm, wow. Uh, but other than that, not much else. Here we are with the inverse. Um, look at that. We have not one, but two 
elastomars, uh, zebra strips. That's what feedi is feeding the uh, display. And yeah, you don't usually see two, but uh, there you have it. And we have some weird, interesting retention plastic that's starting to bend here as well. So, yeah. Uh, finally, we look at those tracks. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I just bumped one off. And this is the ball type, which is a good thing. Spring with balls for that rotary selector. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm going to put this all back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Just to give you an idea of how small this is, look at that. Three and a half inches. Wow, the length. For my metric friends out there, 90 millimeters. It is a tiny, tiny meter. Good things come in small packages, or so the story goes. In this case, not really. No, not too much great to say about this little DVM-810 from Valman. It is a quite uh, interesting meter. Hey, you can do so much better. Yes, it is small, it is diminutive, but at the end of the day, so what? Display is just a little bit too small for me. Um, I would have preferred bigger, bolder digits. The rotary selector switch as well, you really gotta dig in there with your fingers to, and it's just a bit of a pain. Hey, don't even get me started on the fact that it doesn't do capacitance and it has no continuity. And guess what? Yeah, milliamps, total bust. At the end of the day, if it strictly want a meter that does little more than test basic voltage, um, you know what, eh, it works. But you know what, once again, there's a lot better choices. DVM 810 gets a paltry 1.5 out of five stars. Hey, it's got a really weird battery. So if you do end up buying this, make sure you get a couple of those as well because you're gonna need them. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Happy Mother's Day for those of us celebrating here in North America. All the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. This one is for you. Till the next time, keep on testing.